Joining me now for more on renewable energy is Dave Chen, co-founder of Equilibrium Capital. He joins us here in the studios. And in New York City, Daniel Graf von der Scholenberg, Vice President of Hudson Clean Energy. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Daniel, let's start with you. The discussion about clean energy, and, 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 and in particular cars, this isn't something new when we talk about cleaner cars. How much progress have we made as, as a country in the United States and as a globe in particular? Have we made enough progress? Yes, thank you very much. Um, I think there has been a lot of progress in the past and there's still a lot of way to go as well. Um, I think overall there's a very bright future for cleaner cars and there are really three key drivers for this. First of all, the cost of gasoline. Everyone is worried about what they're going to pay at the pump. Secondly, obviously, we have a strong policy support in a lot of countries, especially to address issues of energy security and also, obviously, pollution. And lastly, these cars have become much more competitive. The cost of batteries, which is the main component in these cars, have declined dramatically over the last few years. And the number of modules and different technologies available to customers have increased as well. So I think we've made progress and there's a good future ahead of us. Dave, has the world done enough? You know, I, I think that uh, what's actually more important than potentially the world doing enough, because there has been a tremendous amount of technology and R&D and, and, and frankly manufacturing economy of scale, I think what's actually more exciting is the fact that uh, consumer demographics are starting to shift uh, between the car share services, between the 30-somethings changing their demographic love affair with the car. These are in, in some ways more important factors. And then there's the other one, which I think is oftentimes overlooked, and that's uh, what's happening with corporate fleets whether it's trucking or local. And, uh, and these are, in fact, I think some of the factors that are toggling over to looking at hybrids, electric, and, and alternative fuels. Daniel, I want to ask you this debate about hybrid versus electric, what Dave just mentioned. You know, it's not something, again, it's not something new. Is there enough progress being made? And you mentioned cost, competitive, uh, cost competitiveness earlier. Is it at a point where consumers can afford it and it makes financial sense? I think that's uh, exactly where the differentiation comes in. Um, hybrid car sales have actually been very significant, and there's been uh, almost uh, half a million cars sold in the U.S. last year. And those are starting to be uh, more competitive. And uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of this, but you can actually lease hybrid cars now for monthly rates that are similar to some of conventional cars. Uh, pure electric vehicles still have some more challenges to overcome uh, in the near term in terms of cost competitiveness and also the necessary infrastructure associated with them. You have both mentioned this car sharing thing. This wasn't part of the original topic, but I, I, wanna get, I do want to get into it a little bit more. It's been a big deal. I mean, even here in Washington, D.C., along the West Coast, along the East Coast, and you mentioned a lot of folks don't want to necessarily own a car anymore. They're happy to rent a car. Yeah, I, I think that when you talk about this topic, there is a tendency to think of this as a technology issue. I think we oftentimes forget uh, how long it took for ATM machines to reach consumer adoption, not technology feasibility. The same thing with cell phones. And I think the same thing is absolutely happening here with the with the alternative fuels uh, cars. It's a consumer behavior issue. And, and perhaps what's most interesting and what's most promising is the change that we're starting to see in the way that, that consumers, people, interact with the cars. Daniel, we talk about these changes. Are these trends gonna last for the next five to 10 years? We're talking about a large part of car sharing, consumer behavior, and the fact that maybe in your words, that if, as long as the price keeps coming down on these electric vehicles, that's also going to change behavior as well, will it not? Yeah, I think so. I think there's a lot of uh, potential for change, and I think that generally customers are very positive about green energy. I don't think anyone would be against uh, making an effort for nature and the environment. It's all about getting the cost to the right point and getting the customer adoption and convenience to the point where it's attractive to them. If there's one thing you could advise governments around the world to do that would encourage more of this green energy, in particular with vehicles, what would that be? I think that uh, government support has actually been uh, increasing and very strong. What is important uh, for renewable energy and, and cleaner cars when it comes to government support is continuity and stability. 
This may seem a little counterintuitive, but having less support, but having a clear visibility on how long, for how long it's going to be there and how stable that framework is, is a much better environment to plan and grow businesses and invest capital to grow those businesses. So I think continuity and stability is what we need around those frameworks. Dave, you've been a big proponent of uh, green energy, renewable energy, so many different aspects of it. What would you like to see the governments around the world in particular do? I, I think, again, the, the whole thing is look where the real action is and, and, and put an investment tax credit on corporate fleets. If you look, for example, at the heavy equipment manufacturing uh, business, so let's take a look at all the caterpillars out there. Uh, that's one of, the, one of the hidden markets that you see for electrification is, for example, all the big rigs that are used in mining are already hybrids or full electric. So one of the first hidden markets that this is going to take place in is commercial fleets, commercial applications of moving vehicles. Uh, trucks in the utility industry. So put in an investment tax credit on corporate fleets where there's a tight control. You get to control you the You want to see more financial incentive. Absolutely. Dave Chen, Equilibrium Capital, thank you very much. Daniel Graf von der Schollenberg of Hudson Clean Energy, thank you as well from New York City. Excellent topic, gentlemen.